audience, I'm Andy Scott, and I'm very happy to say that this week I am joined by Paulie Malinagi and Dan Hardy in Las Vegas. Gents, great to see you. Good to see you. Dan, good to see you. Really good to be here. Okay, well, there's only one place to start this week, and we're just days away now from the biggest event in combat sports history. Fraser Dainton caught up with Conor McGregor, and the notorious one is in a confident mood. Bruce Lee said, become the, be, be like water. When, when, when water enters the cup, it becomes the cup. So that's what I am doing here. I am entering into this rule set, into this specific rule set that I've never competed under. And I'm going to take it over, you know, because, because that's what a true martial artist can do. They can uh, adapt to any situation and they can overcome. It's pretty confident, Dan, uh, Conor McGregor. It's unnerving, this sort of confidence. I don't know, it makes me feel a little bit uneasy, the fact that <laughs> I, I arrived here thinking there was only one result, which is Mayweather, and then you get sucked into it. I call it the Audley Harrison effect, but Conor McGregor is very, very confident. He is, you know, and that's, that's a lot of the time how he gets the upper hand on most of his opponents. You know, when they see that confidence, they, they start to believe in him themselves, you know, before they've even fought him. You know, you, you watch the Aldo fight, and when Aldo stepped in against him, you could see there was anxiety in Aldo's face. We'd never seen it before. You know, he, he looked anxious, he looked nervous, because, oh my goodness, he's fighting Conor McGregor. And which is crazy, because you've got to think that he was the champion. Aldo was the, was the champion, reigning champion for a long time. But McGregor comes in with this, with this bravado and this bluster that he's never seen before. And, you know, that puts a lot of pressure on a fighter stepping in against that. I know, I know you've actually sparred him poorly, but... If, this is really quite a ridiculous question, but if you could imagine that you hadn't had this experience with Connor and you were just here as a neutral, you had just arrived today as a casual MMA fan and a former boxer, could you give Connor any chance? I know that's a ridiculous question because I'm asking you to forget all of the stuff that's happened. No, if I hadn't boxed him, um, I would tell you this. I would say this guy's got a lot of, a lot of determination and self-belief. You know, maybe he knows something I don't know. Like it would, don't get me wrong. It, like you call it the Aldi Harrison effect. Because then he get in the ring and nothing happens. Well, the reason I say because, that is because when 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 he fought David Hay, yes. he convinced the this world. This is his whole career, Ollie Harrison. I believe me. I, I was I was in boxing. I, I know I know exactly what you're talking about. And unfortunately for guys like this, the boxing ring is a truth teller. It's only strikes. It's only punches. So there is a very very brutal punishment for being a fraud. You know, and that's the thing. It's it, the. It, it, it's 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 so violent in there. Yeah, you talk about mixed martial arts, violent. You get knee, you get kicked, but you get put out of your misery so easily in mixed martial arts. In boxing, it becomes an assault if you are not qualified to do the things you are saying you can do at this level. Um, but if I hadn't been in the ring with him, I'd tell you, you know what? I would. I, a piece of me would be like, what does this guy know? You know, like what does this guy? What, you know, what, what is it with this guy? You know, there's got to be something about this guy. You know, so I I, I understand where everybody's coming from. You know, uh, I understand from that perspective, from that point of view, especially as the fight gets closer and all this bluster he's coming out with, you know, but I've been in the ring with him, unfortunately. And, and I, know, I know what he's got, and more importantly, I know what he doesn't have. Okay, well, we are going to come on to that later in the show. Dan, is this it's very interesting to pick your brains on this because you are a former MMA fighter. You fought in Vegas. Uh, you're now working on the pundit scene and, um, you know, your onions. Is this the biggest event that you've been part of? Can you compare it to anything else that you've done before? What's it like from your point of view? I'm very interested to know uh, how you're finding it. It's, it's very surreal, to be honest. Um, I mean, w when, the, when there was first rumoured to be fighting, I, I actually didn't think this fight was ever going to happen. I thought this was all talk between the two to kind of raise their profiles. But it came about so quickly. And the momentum that it's gathered uh, over, this, over these last few weeks, particularly after the media tour, has been, has been you know, unprecedented. We've never seen it before. When, I mean, when it was announced, yeah. was there any part of you that was like, uh, not that bothered about seeing that? Or when it, when it was rumoured to happen, were you like, God, I'd love to see that? No, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a sports fan. I'm a combat sports fan. So any kind of any fight like this, particularly with two people that are so confident and so successful in their individual sports, that, I mean, why would I not want to tune into this? You know, I, I would have watched Ali fight Inoki around in those days if I was around. You know, it, it's just fascinating to see how these two guys adapt to each other. You know, like, obviously, you know, we're stepping into a, into a boxing match here. Conor McGregor's having to, having to shelf, you know, you know, 75% of his skill set. You know, there, he has to change a lot of things here going into this fight. But we can't forget that Mayweather has to as well. You know, it, most of the time when Mayweather's fighting a guy, he can research him, he can watch. And, and Mayweather analyzes everything. He's a very intelligent and very observant fighter. So Even he, if he tries to give off this aura exactly, that he doesn't care. Of course, of course. That's a part of it, a part of his bravado. But he, he, he does no doubt. He'll watch everything. He'll have watched the, 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 the 10, 15 second clip of, 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 of Pauly sparring Connor. He will have pulled that apart. He will have watched all of Connor's MMA fights, I'm sure. But the difference is here, he doesn't have a single round of boxing to study of Connor McGregor. 
let me quick, let, do you think he will have done that? Do you think you, you know Floyd better, than, probably better than the two of uh, Dan and I? Would would uh, Floyd have watched Connor's MMA fights, studied them? Yeah, Floyd is a master of preparation. I'm sure even in passing, he'll have watched some things uh, he'll, and he'll have looked for some things. Uh, just in passing, he just, he's not the kind of guy that overthinks it too much. He's not the kind of guy that wants you to take, have that power over him to where he's worried about you. He wants you to worry about him. But in passing, he'll try to get a, a, a gist of your person, you know, more so than just, more so than the tactics, because you don't get a lot of tactics out of, out of a cage fighter now coming to a boxing ring, but you do get the aura of the person, you know, the, the kind of person he is, even small examples. How does he react when you punch him in the face? Does he go away? Does he come to you instead? You know, some guys react differently. Some guys take a punch in the face, they'd rather reset. Some guys take a punch in the face, they'd rather come to you. Small things, patterns like that, you know, in personality that they take into the, into the ring or into the cage, more so than tactical stuff. I think, and you, you figure that stuff out in passing more so than really studying it, you know? Uh, Floyd's not the kind of guy that wants you to have that power over him where he's constantly worried about you. He wants you to worry about him. But he, I, I do think there's a passing curiosity about McGregor with him, yeah. Okay, so let's have a hear from the people behind Conor McGregor. Um, Conor's obviously made the decision to stick with his MMA coaches for the fight, and we heard from both John Kavanagh and Owen Roddy earlier this week. You know what? You know, people say he's unorthodox or it's, he's got an awkward style. Now, his advantage is his ability to read people. You know, I, I've said this for many years. Anyone that we've brought into the gym to spar Conor, within, within a minute, he has them read. He knows what shots they're going to throw. He knows where they're going to be when he throws shots, and then he puts the shots in that apply. And, and that's, that's an ability that I've seen in no other fighter. Connor is the only person that, I, that, I, that I've seen that can do that. And, um, you know, for me, uh, as a coach watching on, that's his biggest weapon. He's got amazing power, like in both hands. In his le like people see his left hand, but he's got power in both hands. Um, he's got amazing reflexes, but his ability to read people when he's fighting them is, is, in my opinion, his best asset. Of course, it's a nice payday. It would be silly to think that that's not a huge factor in this fight. But above all, it's a competition. And he's obviously done quite well in the UFC. He kind of ran through the uh, featherweight division and then he jumped up to uh, lightweight and, and beat the champion, Eddie Alvarez. So the competitive side of him was looking for, OK, what's the next big challenge? And then his, him and Floyd seemed to be on this, uh, this path that was going to cross eventually. It actually began a couple of years ago when me and Connor were out here for his first fight with Justin Poirier and Floyd was fighting, uh, I think it was the second Maidana fight while we were here and that caught his eye. And then uh, I guess the, uh, the, the combat god smiled on us and, and led to this uh, crossing of paths. And here he is again, he's, in, he's, he's given himself a huge challenge, a huge task, a huge mountain to climb. But that's what gets him out of bed in the morning. He's not going to be excited by a fight that he thinks he can, he can walk through. And it was just money. He could just do a couple of, uh, go to Hollywood and do a couple of movies. And there's easier ways to make money than the, what he's putting himself through here in training. So uh, for me, and I think evidence shows, it's the drive of competition. And do you think because of that, Floyd is, is, is under pressure here? Because he's not only got his legacy at stake here, but he's got the whole of boxing behind him as well. Well, I'll put it this way to you. If this was in MMA, if they were fighting in the UFC and Conor came back to me at the end of round one without having finished Floyd, I would be seriously worried. I'd be asking him, what are you doing? What's going wrong here? Because the last time, I mean, it was two older guys, uh, James, Tony and, uh, and Randy Couture, and Randy put him away in seconds. And that's what I would expect to happen with Conor. If he went five minutes with Floyd in MMA and didn't finish him, I'd be really upset. I'd be seeing as that we're making major mistakes. So I wonder what's going to go through their minds when Floyd comes back after round one, after round two, after round three. And this uh, half crazy Irish guy is still laughing at him, talking to him, smiling at him, putting him under pressure, starting to land shots that they weren't expecting. Um, that, that's a hard thing to deal with. We're ready for a tough fight, but I think they think it's going to be a walkover. So how does your mind cope with it when it's not and when you start losing rounds? So uh, I will be having one eye in the corner to see them start to fall apart, which I believe they will early on. So interesting that John Kavanagh was saying uh, the following, Dan. If at the end of the first round the fight is still happening, he said uh, when Connor comes back to the corner, he will be looking over to the Floyd Mayweather corner and thinking, if I was in Floyd's corner, I'd be saying, how the hell is that guy still standing after the first round? Because everybody, I say everybody, a number of people think that it could go short. 
I personally don't, but John Kavanagh was saying, you know, I'll be looking to see if they're panicking in that corner. You know, how the hell is this still guy still there? And after two, three rounds where this mad Irishman is laughing in our face, how are they going to react? You know these guys, you know John Kavanagh and Owen Roddy, what are they like? And um, has he made the right decision by sticking with the tried and, uh, tried and tested methods that he's used in MMA? Well, the difficult thing when you get to McGregor's level is, that, you know, who, who do you look who do you look to in the boxing world that you can bring in that's going to actually genuinely help you? Like a, like a hired boxing. gun, someone like Emmanuel Stewart used to, exactly. people used to get him in for a fight. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be a very difficult thing. Plus, you know, trusting somebody at this stage in his career is very difficult as well. Bringing somebody new into his training camp and saying, I put some faith in this person to not only give me their input, but also to see what I'm working on for the fight. That's very risky. Now, I, I've said this before, I thought it was a, a really wasted opportunity to, to bring Paul in and not even just to sit down and, and chat about the fights with him. Just watch a, a couple of Mayweather fights and just discuss it. I mean, just chatting to Paulie this week, I've learned so much about boxing purely because it's an encyclopedia. So to have not brought anybody in, it does concern me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> to, to not bring anybody in does concern me a little bit. But this Connor has faith in his, in his training camp and his, his team because they've got him to where he is. Yes, this is a different animal. This is a different beast entirely. But Connor's approaching this from a, a martial artist perspective. So to bring a boxer in may influence him in the wrong in the wrong direction. Educate us just slightly. So what would a striking coach? You've got to remember, I'm a I'm a casual MMA fan that will watch the main event and get sucked into it uh, and enjoy it for what it is. But I'm not a lover of mixed martial arts, so I don't understand the intricacies of it. What would a striking coach do with a MMA fighter? Obviously they work on their striking, but what does that actually entail? Um, a lot of pad work, as you would expect. Exactly the same, same for boxing, um, but we're covering, you know, kicking, punching, elbowing and kneeing. So the range changes, the padded, pads change. If, if you work in hands, we'll use focus mitts, but a lot of the time they will use the tie pads, so you can work a lot of kicking as well. Um, the footwork and the range is very different as well. The way that you have to move in to set your punches up. And then also the afterthought of once you've punched, what, you're, what is your opponent going to do? Assume you don't land the punch. Your opponent's going to try and tie you up. Then you're into a whole different a aspect of the game. There's a grapple then. The guy's going to try and keep his hands on you and drag you to the floor. Especially at McGregor, who's known for his power punching. Now, it, it, it's difficult to know how they approach this one, but I don't think they would change a great deal. All they're doing is they're taking Conor McGregor out of mixed martial arts, they're shedding the skills that he can't use and sharpening the ones that he can. So they've been doing that his entire career. They just have to be more specific in their focus now. Would you have expected Conor McGregor to bring in a boxing coach, a unique, maybe consultant, I don't know, throwing names out there, anyone that you could have thought of? Are you, are you surprised that he didn't bring in someone in? I think somebody like a Freddie Roach would have done him just fine. I think uh, they will have learned that lesson after Saturday night. I think if he intends to box again, they will have learned that lesson and they will bring in somebody for the next time around, and I think they'll, he'll, they'll improve him. Um, having said that, I, I, th I look at what, what you tell me these guys are saying, where uh, it, when the first round is over, we're going to be looking at that corner and see the panic. I feel like nobody thinks Connor's going to stop in the first round, so the fact that they're looking to take anything they can out of a positive like if we get out of the first round that's a positive mm -hmm. you know what i mean like i feel like they're almost searching for things to to give themselves this false bravado like it's going to come to the point where it's ridiculous things like if mayweather sits down and drinks a glass of water with his right hand instead of his left hand oh he did it with the <laughs> other hand it's like come on bro like you're, you're now this is why people are laughing at you you know what i'm saying stop already stop nobody thinks you're gonna get stopped in the first round enough with the bs you know what i'm saying like like, like you're not gonna look back or you come back at the end of the round one and you can look across the corner like they're panicking no they're not panicking they're just gonna come out in round two and beat you up again. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's more so the, the the game plan of a boxer anyway. Nobody's thinking to take your head off right away, especially a guy like Floyd Mayweather. But but Floyd's a natural counter puncher anyway. So if everybody there's this, this mad thing that everybody thinks that Connor is gonna come out swinging. So he's probably not gonna come out swinging because he thinks that that's what everyone thinks he's gonna do. So he's gonna do the opposite. Do you, you follow me? Because I'm actually making myself yeah. a little bit sick. Yeah, yeah uh, of course. But there's so many Floyd, Floyd's possibilities. A natural, but Floyd's, but a natural, Floyd's a natural counter puncher. He is, so but he's Floyd not. is also a guy who Floyd won a bronze medal at the Olympics in a fight where he probably should have won. Floyd probably could have won the gold medal that year in the Olympics. So when you're that schooled at your sport, at boxing, you know how to fight going forwards and backwards. We've seen Floyd come fight going forwards. It's just he's forced to respect some fighters so much that he has to fight them going backwards because they're so powerful, they're so strong, they're so good. He's beating the best fighters in the world. But even some of these best fighters in the world, he's coming forward. The only way you make Floyd back up is if you show him you need to be respected. We're going to find out Saturday night if McGregor shows that. All this blazing power in this left hand that everybody keeps talking about. If Mayweather's walking Connor down, he's going to take that left hand on the arms and may even hit him. 
You know what I mean? You're going to see. When I remember when he was walking down Zab Judah, Zab got through a shot, a blazing left hand. And Zab's known as a puncher in boxing. He got through Floyd Mayweather's gloves. He got through the guard. So if Mayweather decides he's going to start walking Conor down, one, you got to think of two things. One, he's lost all respect for him. He's got no respect for him if he's walking him down. Two, that means shots are going to be taken on the arms. Some may get through in order to be assaulted. Floyd will continue to try to assault you, put that mental pressure on you before, the, before he puts the physical pressure on you, create panic in you because your key's constantly in range. Now, what happens when all of a sudden you find out that the shots on the arms don't do anything and the shots that get through don't do anything? You find out you weren't the puncher you were. What, what do you do then? All this, all this talk about this big left hand, what happens when it's not there? What happens when, it's, when, when you know, you're such a big puncher? Mike Tyson used to knock out guys even if they blocked it. So if you're such a big puncher, if you're landing on Floyd's arms and, 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 and shoulders and whatnot, you're supposed to break him down. What happens when you're not? What happens? See, well, the thing, the thing that buys at Connor some time and the thing that, that will give him confidence going into this fight, particularly in the earlier rounds, is that I, I don't think Mayweather's offensive can be supported by his hand strength. You know, he's had problems with his hands all the way through his career, right back in, you know, it, you know, probably 10, 10, 12 years ago. So you've got to think that if he is, he is, if he's walking McGregor down, the same thing again. He has to, McGregor has to respect Floyd's power if he's going to be pushed back because he is the bigger man in there. And I just don't think Floyd has the hand strength to back up the power that he can throw. Body shots, head shots, the variation. It's not so much the strength because I've backed up fighters. You know, as a matter of fact, in my fight against Judah, Judah was backing up the entire fight. And I'm obviously not known as a big puncher as much as Judah's known as a big puncher. But when you're varying your offense so much that the guy doesn't know what's coming at any given point, the intimidation of that backs him up. The yeah. intimidation, it's not so much the power. Now you don't know if you're going to get hit with a right or left. You don't know if it's going to come from underneath or over the top. You don't know if it's going to come down the middle or from the side. The intimidation of not being able to anticipate what's going on automatically causes com confusion, it causes panic, and you start to back up. You also causes, it also causes mistakes. So it's not so much the one-punch power, so much strength, because you tend to tell me, yeah, Connor gets hit with knees and kicks. Absolutely. It's not so much that. It's the confusion of not understanding how to properly defend yourself. When you're stuck here, not knowing how to defend yourself, now where do you go? What do you do? They, not they don't tickle. They may not be knees and kicks, but they don't tickle. And they start to take, they start to take effect on you, and Connor is fair-skinned. He's going to start getting cut. He's eyes closed and whatnot if, if this happens to go this way so he's got to figure out a way besides this quote-unquote vaunted left hand that he's got that everybody keeps talking about you know it, it's got to be way more than that if he's going to be successful and he's got to understand it more so than anybody else has to understand it fans are going to be fans they're going to talk about the left hand even though they never felt it and they don't know what it's like and then to them it's Thor's hammer regardless of, of what you say you know but it, the reality of is Connor has to know that it's not Thor's hammer Connor, Connor has to know that I need a backup plan aside from this landing a left hand. You're all you keep talking about is the fight's going to end in two rounds. In round one, he's going to be down. He, but then he talks about if he's finished in round one and he's sitting in the corner, they're going to be panicking because he's in the corner. I thought if he was down in round one, why would they be panicking just for you standing up after round one? You know what I'm saying? I, they don't even make any sense. So like I said, the next thing you're going to hear is at the press conference, if, if Floyd drinks water with the wrong hand, they're going to talk about that was there in his head. They're trying too hard. Just focus on the fight. When you are in full flow, there is nothing better. <laughs> there is nothing. It's like someone lights a fire under you and you go. I know this boxing like the back of my hand, and it's a it's a blessing and a curse. And that's the problem. <laughs> it's hard. It's, it's hard to educate idiots, but it's a pleasure when people know what I'm talking about. You know, okay. when, when you add a sprinkle of emotion in there, it's like an exorcism. It's like it has to come <laughs> it's out coming. of you. Know? It's coming. <laughs> right, uh, Dan. This is your last part with us because the next, uh, well, you know, the last couple of bits are just about. Um, about boxing. So, just before you go, it'd be great having you on the podcast. Uh, I just want you to state your case. Ah, that's unfair. Just tell us what you think is going to happen. You don't, you're not here to justify MMA, but tell us what you think is going to happen. Well, you know, I've been saying it all week. The safe money is Mayweather by decision because that's what we generally see in Mayweather's fights. He doesn't take risks early on, which means that I feel like Connor's got at least four or five rounds to, to test his luck and to see if he can land that big left hand, or at least to see if he can land something to open up an opportunity for that left hand. If it goes past six, that's when you start getting the Floyd Mayweather avalanche. He starts to pick up his pace, he starts to pick up his volume, and then all the all the, the information that he's gleaned from that first those first few rounds, that's when he starts to exploit those weaknesses that you've got. Especially because you've got to think now, Connor's probably missed 80% of his punches like all of Mayweather's opponents do. He's probably started to wear himself out, he's slowed down, so those, those openings that Floyd spotted in the first four or five rounds will now be far more prevalent. It'll be far more easier to exploit those. So that's the risk here. For Connor, it's got to be in the first six. For Floyd, it'll be the last six. So really, how you score those first four rounds, you know what I mean? If, if Connor can knock him down one time, if he can get a 10-8 round, or even even if we see another standing eight count for the, uh, for the, uh, for the, the damaged hands of, Connor, of Floyd, as we saw in the Hernandez fight, you know? 
I, Connor's got a hard head. I mean, he might even be coming in to, to, to like catch punches on the elbows and catch punches on the forehead and try and actually damage Floyd's hands. He's thinking outside of the box. He's thinking like a martial artist. He's quoting Bruce Lee, you know? You know, you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. The cup is boxing in this thing. So you're taking the martial artist and you're pouring him into the cup of boxing. He's adapting to that. And that's exactly what we're expecting to see. He's got me, he's looking at <laughs> me. He had me there and I look, you see, I've been done there. Right, uh, Dan, thank you so much for coming on. Um, Nathan Clever.